you've heard the gospel. And I came across this piece of writing when I was researching this reading of Lazarus by the Reverend Susan Gleeson. And I th it just fitted me and felt right. And I thought, I'm going to share it with you. The, um, I'm reading it from Mary's point of view as Lazarus' sister. So I didn't need to look like me, I need to feel like Mary, and this helps. It's titled, A Matter of Life and Death. It was a matter of life and death. Lazarus was very ill, and Martha and I had done everything we knew to help, but to no avail. So we sent for Jesus. We knew that if Jesus laid his hand upon our brother, he would be made well. We knew because Jesus had healed others in miraculous ways. Lepers were made clean. The blind were made to see. He was a wonderful healer. And he loved Lazarus. He loved all of us, really. And we loved him. Sometimes he would come to our home to share a meal with us and to teach us. He revealed the meaning of the law and the prophets to us. I could sit at his feet for hours and listen. My sister Martha would grow impatient with me and complain because I was so engrossed in listening to Jesus that I wouldn't help her get the food prepared and on the table. So when Lazarus grew ill, we called upon Jesus, certain that help was on its way. But our certainty soon turned to despair. Lazarus died, and we laid him in his tomb, and there was still no sign of Jesus. I was so sure that Jesus would come. Why had he ignored our need? Wasn't he the one who said, Ask and you shall receive? Well, we had asked. I didn't understand then what I've come to know since. Jesus does hear and answer, but the answer may not always be what we expect when we expect it. He did come eventually. By then, Lazarus had been entombed for four days. Everyone knew that after three days, the soul departed from the body. There would be no bringing Lazarus back. Why had Jesus waited so long? In a way, I suppose I've been selfish in expecting him to come. <clears throat> After all, it was a dangerous thing for Jesus to return to Judea. <clears throat> Only a short time before Lazarus became ill, there were those who had tried to stone Jesus to death because he told them that he and the Father were one. But despite the danger, Jesus did come. And many of his followers came with him. It was brave of them all to make the journey especially since Jesus told them that Lazarus was already dead. But Jesus had said that Lazarus' illness was to bring God glory. And Jesus always did what he knew would give glory to God and taught his followers to do the same. But once Jesus had made it clear that he was indeed coming to Judea despite the threats, I'm told that one of his disciples, Thomas, said to the others, Let us also go, so that we may die with him. Those who truly loved the Lord were willing to die in order to follow him. There are some even today, I'm told, who take such risks. By the time Jesus arrived, 
we were deep in mourning. Friends and members of the community in Jerusalem had come to the house to comfort Martha and me and to share our grief. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. She went to him and said what was in both our hearts. Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. Those words were an affront in some ways, but also a statement of faith. And Martha continued to have faith, even though Jesus had disappointed us by not saving Lazarus from death. She said to Jesus, But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Sometimes it's hard to remain faithful when you're hurt and angry, but Martha held on to her belief in the Lord, and her faith was answered. Jesus said, Your brother will rise again. Well, we all knew that. Most Jews believed that we'd be resurrected on the last day, and Martha told him she knew that. But then Jesus told her something she didn't yet know. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And then he asked Martha, Do you believe this? I don't know how I would have answered him. (laughs) How did those who die live, and how could a person never die? I think I'd have been stumped. But Martha answered by telling Jesus what she did know about him. She said, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. I think for her, it was enough to know that Jesus was the one God had promised to send, even if some of what Jesus said was a mystery. She knew that she could trust what he said because she knew who he was and who had sent him. After that, she came back to the house and told me that Jesus had come and that he was looking for me. I hurried out to meet him. Many of the people saw me dash out. They assumed I was going to my brother's tomb to mourn there and they followed after me. When I came to the place where Jesus was, I knelt at his feet, overcome by emotion. And like my sister, I said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus looked at me and at those who had followed me. And when he saw how we were crying out in our distress, he became very disturbed. He was moved by our pain and asked where we had laid Lazarus' body. We told him, Lord, come and see. And then Jesus began to weep. Some of the crowd assumed that he was mourning Lazarus, and they said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who had opened the eyes of a blind man have kept this man from dying? But I think Jesus' weeping was different. We cried aloud for our loss. It was the way we were taught. But Jesus' tears were different. He cried softly, almost to himself. I don't think he was crying for Lazarus alone. I think he was crying for all of us, for the terrible pain of death itself. God's children were not created for death, but for life, that we might give glory to God. The terrible power of death disturbed him, and he wept. When we got to the tomb, 
Jesus asked that the stone that secured the tomb be pushed out of the way. Martha was quick to protest. Lord, already there's a stench because he's been dead for four days. Maybe we're all a little like Martha sometimes. I mean, how many times have I asked God to do something and then tried to take back control because there might be something unpleasant that I don't want to have to deal with in the process? How often do we feel the panic that comes from realising that the fulfilment of our prayers may mean having to face what just plain stinks? People pray for peace of mind for those who struggle with addiction and then they say, I don't want a halfway house in my backyard. People complain about how the environment's been ruined but they don't want to put up with the smell and the discomfort or the inconvenience of public transport. We declare that something should be done for the homeless but we pretend we don't see them when we pass by them on the way to our work each day. Like my sister, we want Jesus to work miracles as long as there's nothing to offend our senses or sensibilities. But Jesus knew that sometimes we have to believe beyond the fear. So they moved the stone away. Jesus prayed aloud for the benefit of those who had gathered. He said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. And he added that he knew the Father always heard him, but that he wanted those presents present to believe that the Father had sent him. And then he shouted, Lazarus, come out. And my brother walked out of the tomb, still covered by the cloth strips with which they'd bound him before placing him in the tomb. Jesus said, Unbind him and let him go. It was a miracle. Jesus had brought life to Lazarus. As others witnessed the new life in Lazarus, they came to believe in Jesus. Now, I don't know where you're at today, but I'm willing to believe that there's something in my story for you. Maybe, like Martha or me, you've asked Jesus to help you and you're sure he hasn't heard. Remember, Jesus won't always answer when or how we expect. But that doesn't mean our requests are unheard. Jesus will find a way to use even the most painful of situations to bring glory to God. Or maybe you're at a place like Martha, where you feel confused by something Jesus said. Perhaps you're struggling with the word of God. Remember that though there are some lessons we may not fully understand, we may still trust in Jesus because we know who he is and we know who sent him. And sometimes if we just keep faith and continue to walk with Jesus, he will take us to a place where all becomes clear. Or maybe like Martha, you've turned to Christ for help but fear that the answer will be messy in some way. Jesus knows your doubts, but wants you to keep faith so that you too will see the glory of God. Or maybe you're like my brother Lazarus, and you feel as though the life has gone out of you, or perhaps that life has passed you by. Maybe you're feeling soulless, and wrapped up in things that won't let you go. Jesus offers you new life. He will call you by your name and loose that which binds you. And then, as others witness the change that Jesus makes in you, they too will come to believe and will find life in Christ. That's how it's always been. Those who answer Christ's call to new life find a teacher and a friend 
for whom they're willing to die. But of course, it is Jesus who died for us that we might have eternal life. Funny, I started my story telling you it was a matter of life and death. But the truth is that with Jesus, it's really a matter of life and life and life. Amen.